want to talk? So let's talk. Welcome back to Talk to Solomon. That's me, Stan Solomon, my co-host. Chief Steve. Police Chief, uh, former Police Chief Steve Davis and financial expert Greg Howard. Greg, tell people about your program. Well, uh, I have a program on Thursday nights on Conservative Report on Blog Talk Radio. And I've invited Stan to join me. Uh, hopefully he'll be able to make it when he gets done with his other things. We'll keep a time slot open for him. And we discuss current events uh, and it's a call-in format. All right, again, the address is? It's on Blog Talk. I post the link every uh, week on Twitter, and so follow me on Twitter, Greg W. Howard, and you'll see the link because the link changes each week with the format of the show. Very good. All right, and, of course, our guest of honor, Major General Jerry Curry, a man who rose from uh, whatever they call him, Buck Private, is that the lowest rank, uh, up the to become a two-star general? In the United States Army, uh, served his country with honor, uh, took an oath, and and believed it then, and believes it now, and in my opinion, doesn't believe that the the commander in chief uh, believes the oath that he took. Is that far fetched? Very close. Why? Right, let's go to uh, Morsi in Egypt. This fellow is taking on the judge, the judiciary, who have said what he's doing is not. Uh, allowed under their constitution, and he, like Obama, says uh, the law is what I say it is. And if I say it's okay, it's okay. And he is basically saying he is going to be in control of, quote-unquote, all three branches. Everyone answers to him. He fired the military uh, leaders, uh, generals, and replaced them with hacks, just like Obama has done. Uh, and I am saying this because I expect Barack Obama before the 2014 election to declare, decree, and usurp uh, more authority. Do you think I'm wrong? I think that's exactly where he's going. I think that's, that's what he has in mind, and the answer is yes. He's going to do all he can to you. This, this man has shown by his actions in the last two years that as far as he's concerned, the rule of law is a joke. Now, this is a tough question for a a member of the United States military, retired. What, if anything, should we, the average folks, should people involved in the military, should people involved in the private sector, should people involved in the public sector do? I think they ought to continue doing what they're doing. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not for uh, uh, some great revolution. Uh, to kick this guy out. Uh, I'm, I'm disappointed in the American people. Uh, you know, the, it's, it's the old story. You, know, you, you can make the mistake once, and we can forgive you, and, that, and all is well. But to make it twice, that shows absolute stupidity. And it just I never believed that the United States, the people of the United States, uh, would be stupid two times in a row. Once, yes. Twice, doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I, I just can't understand how we did that. And uh, from what I hear of people on television in their, their interviews and read the articles in the paper, I am convinced that uh, those people even haven't learned their lesson today. If he ran for uh, office again uh, tomorrow, they would reelect him. This doesn't make any sense to me. But, I, but, uh, but in answer to your question, I just want you to know I'm very, very cautious about uh, taking any overt action of any kind against a, a sitting president. Should the United States House of Representatives bring uh, about impeachment charges? If they can, the answer is yes. Uh, I have thought all along that, that that's what should really happen. There's no, there's no guarantee this man is going to finish four more years. Uh, he's been elected for four more years, but I must tell you, the way he, this guy... The things he's doing, for example, uh, the debt problem, uh, it's not as, as people think it is. Uh, this man has, do, has, has done all sorts of things 
that have just been absolutely horrible, horrendous. And I just, uh, I don't know, I, I'm very frustrated. You and uh, at least 150 million of us. Uh, Greg, your thoughts? Well, I don't think we should take anything overt or criminal in terms of action at this time. Um, our actions should be limited to self-defense if anything starts. However, there is nothing that says that we cannot do everything we legally can to resist. And that means, first of all, doing everything we can to harm his propaganda arm, the media. And like I said earlier in the show, we have got a very strong and growing operation against the media. We are removing their sponsors from MSNBC right now. We're, we've, not only have we started a crack between MS, uh, MSNBC and Procter and & Gamble, uh, Starbucks is feeling the pain. Oral-B is part of uh, Procter & Gamble. They're feeling the pain. Pizza Hut is feeling the pain. Campbell's Soup is feeling the pain. And uh, this movement is growing. Unlike last year, people were not ready, but now enough people are, are angry. And remember, conservatives are 40% of the population. They're 60% of the buying power, and they're ready to finally flex their muscle. Uh, op slam hashtag is now trending faster than two of the other conservative hashtags at this point on Twitter. So it is growing. So we can at least start to damage his propaganda arm, and we can do it legally and peacefully. So if you're listening, please get involved in that. All right. Again, that hashtag? O-P-S-L-A-M. Op -slam. Oscar Papa Sierra Lima Alpha Mike. Okay. Uh, Chief? Well, two things. First of all, if, if we look at uh, what's happened in the Middle East with this change of governments, first of all, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton both just championed all of these riots that took place, the, you know, the, these Muslim springs, which is really going to be a Muslim lifetime. Uh, but what's happened is all of the, the countries that the leaders were replaced, they, the, the leaders that were there before were more tolerant of us and Israel than what's taken over now, which are much more radical, much, more, much less tolerant of us, and much more against Israel. And here at home, we are, we are duty-bound by the Constitution and the Second Amendment to have a well-regulated militia, which means us, the we the people that regulate ourselves to form an armed group of, of men and women that are trained and regulated by ourselves, and not to overthrow the, the president, but that is one of the reasons that they gave us the Second Amendment was in case our government would did become too oppressive to overthrow it. But also, we're on the verge now, they're going to slash our military, we're duty-bound to, to, to have some type of organization start where we can defend ourselves if we're attacked by a foreign country or something else of that nature. And so I would look to, some groups got to start this. Maybe the NRA or somebody like that would start this organization to get us in a well-regulated shape where we can actually help our government and our country and our, and our neighbors protect ourselves if we're attacked. I think those are sage words. Uh, now, we're going to take a, a quick poll right here on this show. We'll start with Major General Jerry Curry. Time Magazine is trying to determine who should be their person of the year, and they have nominated, among others, Sandra Fluke. She's the lady that said that going to law school, which costs $30,000 a year, she can't afford birth control, and she likes to sleep around, so she thinks the government should pay for her $9 a month birth control, although I understand corks are less expensive than that. That's just a, a rumor. Uh, General, do you think that Sarah Fluke should be the person of the year? <laughs> that's an evil laugh. <laughs> oh, I, I, I got to tell you, that's rich. Uh, let, let me play. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be the straight guy. Uh, the answer is under no condition should she be the, <laughs> the person of the year any year. Uh, this, 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 this woman is not doing anything to uh, advance America and our lifestyle and, and to help us down the road. <laughs> this, this, this gal is a disaster. Well, they are auctioning off a strategy session with Sandra Fluke to raise money for a national women's organization. And I understand the last time they got it all the way up to $22. Are you going to bid on that? Uh, I, I, I have to think about this. <laughs> Twenty-two dollars is a uh, is an awful lot of money for her. All right. Well, that sounded a little <laughs> less. <laughs> uh, we'll go now to Mr. Sensitivity himself, Greg Howe. I'll play devil's advocate and say she should be the time person of the year, and here's why: 
Nobody better symbolizes the hypocrisy and the absolute decay of the left in America and what America has become than she does. Here she is going to a filthy rich person law school and demanding that the government still pay her $9 a month for her birth control pills. And then she runs around the country holding protest sessions at which 15 to 20 people show up. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to hear it. And they can't even raise any money for a strategy session for her. So in terms of absolutely meaningless, hypocritical, and everything everything that absolutely symbolizes the total decay of the left that they are putting on America, she would be an ideal person of the year for, for, for Time Magazine. Uh, I'll put you down on her social calendar. Uh, Chief. <clears throat> I'm going to vote yes. Please for... don't. Oh, God, I don't have that many condoms. <laughs> What, why don't we make her Secretary of State? Uh, they're going to make her suck Secretary of State. So it's a, <laughs> it's a different position. <laughs> I didn't even say that. You just... I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to vote yes with two conditions. One is they change the title to Slut of the Year, and she has to wear a slut <laughs> button. She has to wear a slut button in the photograph, and I'd rather have a dead rat in my mouth than buy a copy of Time Magazine. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to uh, side with the general, saying that, you know, the fact that, that they would give any attention to this non-sequitur, this, this meaningless uh, Democrat operative, uh, is frustrating to me. Of course, I do know that Time Magazine goes regularly to, you know, to dentist office, doctor's offices, and into outhouses throughout, throughout the, the Northeast, but... But um, uh, I think that anything that she can put on her resume other than slut uh, is an overstatement and unfortunate. All right, let's move uh, down because we, that's, his, that's, listen to this. I'll, I'll, again, I'll start with the general because he has the most evil laugh I've ever heard. <laughs> A Belgian man wants to have his marriage annulled. He's been married for 19 years. It seems that he was informed uh, uh, through a source that he didn't expect, that his wife was at one time a man. At which point he said, uh, you got to be kidding. Uh, and they said no. So, uh, General, do you think this man should be granted an annulment on the small point that his wife never told him that she was actually a man at one time? Yeah, I saw that and uh, read a little bit about it. <laughs> I, I, I got to tell you, I, I, I don't know how I would handle that. I, I kind of think I, I would lose it if, if I were in that man's position. Uh, they would probably end up with me uh, on death row. <laughs> I, I just think, I, I don't think I could handle it. Uh, well, obviously you have handled it for 19 years in this particular case, but, but uh, one would have to, you know, probably buy... A, a, Five gross of Listerine uh, yeah, at the very least. He's going to ignore Greg's hashtag and buy all the, the mouthwash he can find. <laughs> well, don't get the profit. Which one does Proctor Gamble make? Doesn't, Just the other it, one. It doesn't matter. He's going to buy them all. He's going to buy <laughs> Greg, <laughs> your thoughts. How do you not know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I, every once in a while, these stories come up, and I go, how do you not know? Well, I was assume there was I, I, surgery. I just don't get it. So and she probably I'm the wrong modest. person to ask, but I'll tell you what. If, 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 if on my wedding night I found out there would be an ambulance called, okay? I know. You'd have a heart attack, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I somehow It'd be I a cardiac know. arrest. But it wouldn't be mine. It would, yeah, you, you know, my mother always told me to be generous. I don't have heart attacks. I give them. But, uh, Steve, uh, w would justifiable homicide uh, apply in this case? God forbid someone would hurt somebody? Absolutely. I'm going to, you know, when someone would find out something this drastic and this, and this awful, um, a breakdown of the, of the human psyche was definitely going to happen. Hmm. And, by the way, the woman was from, oh, the man, uh, the person was from Indonesia, so uh, uh, it was one of those probably mail-order brides, and I, I guess he didn't read the fine print. 
Um, you know, they spell mail differently. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awful. All right. Now that we're talking, of course, now I'm going to say this, and everyone can call me all kinds of names, and I, and I accept that you, you have as much right to call me names as I have to tell you to kiss my Obama. But listen, in Reverend Wright's church, this has been well documented. There was a program called the Down Low Program. I think I mentioned this when the general was on before. But I'm not saying this for titillation. I'm saying it because it's fact. That they had many members of their church, uh, many male members who were homosexual or bisexual, if you will. And in order to bring these people back into the mainstream and make them more, quote unquote, mainstream and more marketable and therefore more able to tie into the church uh, and maybe to help them to have a more normal life. I'm not going to take away all good motives. Um, they took the, the women who could not find husbands and matched them with these homosexuals or bisexuals and they kind of had a merger. So the woman could say she had a man and the man could say he was married and have a you know, a more presentable facade, and it was a well-known program. And it, by the way, it worked. Now, here's the reality. Michelle Obama, when she's wearing flats and bent over, is six foot seven. The woman is tall. No one could argue that. Uh, and even though she has toned arms, most arms that are eight feet long look toned. So that's how... This marriage was arranged between Michelle, whatever her maiden name was, I don't know, and Barack Obama. Now, Michelle tells a story about she was raised in a modest home. Her father, who was a Democrat uh, inside party guy, made in today's dollars about 350000 a year. That's not struggling, folks. That's being pretty well off. Uh, that's in the top one half of 1%. So... And, and everyone knows that, wrong, well, many people know that when Barack Obama was high school, college, he, he had a, an Indonesian lover, male lover, and that's the guy he went to Pakistan with. So my point is that right, wrong, or different is not even the issue. The reality is that Barack Obama was... What he is today, I have no idea, but was uh, uh, an active homosexual at one time. That's been somewhat covered up, but not really covered up. So his conversion to uh, accepting homosexual marriage is not really surprising. And kind of an aside to the story is that Chelsea Clinton made commercials to support same-sex marriage and the networks rejected them, not because they were against same-sex marriage, because they thought it might damage Chelsea in her political career that has yet to really take hold. Now, having said all that, General, if you woke up one day and found out that your wife was actually Barack Obama, no, I'm not going there. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on this? I, I don't have any thoughts on this. I got to tell you, uh, my friend, you have taken me over the cliff. I don't think I, I don't think I can handle it. I'm sure not going to comment on it. Okay, I'll go to Greg, who will comment on just about anything. Greg, well, uh, this story about the down low program is not really a surprise. Uh, it's been out there for a while. Uh, There's no question that uh, there are plenty of uh, stories out there about Barack Obama, and uh, I believe he did participate in the down low program. Um, there's plenty of stories about uh, past lovers of his that were gay and so forth. And it would explain a great deal of his dictator mentality since there's a great... Um, I don't want to get into too much deep a psychological analysis of the guy. Since I left my psychological degree, and a lot of people will attack me for not having a psychological degree. So, But bottom line is he is clearly gay, all right? And that uh, he is uh, using this uh, Reverend Wright's down low program to pass as a normal person or a heterosexual person. 
and uh, Michelle Obama has gratefully gone along with this for the power and prestige that it has brought into her life. But there's no question that the man is gay and taking advantage of this situation. Uh, right, by the way, uh, we, we, you and the general and, and chief and I, spent $1.4 or $1.34 billion just in 2011 for vacations and trips for the Obamas. More, by the way, than the royal families of every country in the world all put together multiplied. No mm -hmm. president, no dictator, no king, queen. Well, I shouldn't use that term with Barack Obama. But anyway, my, my point is they believe it is their right to live like kings and queens. Chief. Well, there's a lot about Barack Obama that we don't know. There's more we don't know than what we do know. So his, his prior life is a big mystery. All of his records are sealed. We don't know where his birth certificate really says. We don't know anything about his college transcripts. He didn't have any college girlfriends or high school girlfriends popping up that we know of, so the gay thing's really in play here. Uh, but he, he, he has been uh, a, a secretive person with his past history. Greg mentioned a movie called uh, 2016. There's another movie called Dreams from My Real Father. If you watch both of those, it really puts all the pieces together to show you what Barack Obama's made up of, which is really an anti-American person who does have a lot of uh, anti-American themes in his background, and he's really not the person you might think that he is. He, it's just a facade. All right. I want to end our time with General Curry, going back to uh, UN Ambassador Susan Rice and these cries of racism and sexism, I guess, for not going along with her, and with Barack Obama saying, if you attack her, you're attacking me, and give McCain some credit. He said, damn right we're attacking you. You're incompetent. Uh, where was that before the election, a general? Uh, he, he's, I must tell you, he's somebody who deserves to be attacked. Uh, I heard him, uh, I saw him in the speech when he, when he said that. I thought that it was very phony to me. I, you know, I thought it was just all make-believe. He was putting on all of this, this feigned uh, insulting that he had gone through, and he was protecting uh, this young lady's uh, honor and dignity and Truthfulness, I didn't believe it for a second. Uh, I felt he was using it for political advantage. And the unfortunate part of it is we have a number of people in this country. For example, I, don't, I can't understand how black Americans can watch this fellow's operations and what he says and what, he's, what he does and not really come to understand that this is a man who is a disaster, who is destroying the United States of America. I don't care what his race is. His race isn't good enough for me. At some point in time, you've got to do what's right, and you've got to make uh, good choices, good decisions, and he's not doing any of it. Well, and let's go uh, even a step further in that direction. The state of black America, and there's someone that does that. I'm not sure who it is, uh, maybe the NAACP or somebody, but black America has gone backwards economically 30-plus years under this man's leadership. Am I right or wrong? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I can't understand why in the world they still are running around uh, sucking up to this guy and pretending that he's wonderful and that he is uh, their Messiah. He may be theirs, but he's sure not mine. Well, General, we thank you so much for your time. It's always a joy. We are going to have a show. We're going to devote your book. I'm about halfway through it. Uh, and uh, give people the way they can get your book, your electronic book. Uh, go to uh, Amazon.com. And uh, click off uh, books, and then uh, type in the, either the, the, the title of my book, uh, which is The Dream Continues, or just type in my name, Jerry Curry. Uh, Jerry Curry is probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, you type that in, and it will come up, and uh, they will be happy to either sell you a Kindle set, or they will be happy to download it right on your computer. And it's only 99 cents, or a two ninety nine or 5 How much is it? I think it's seven ninety nine. Seven ninety nine. All right, folks. Let me highly recommend that. And uh, Greg, a, a final comment for the general. Uh, general, we salute you for uh, your service and for your great comments tonight. I really enjoyed uh, your evil laugh. That's <laughs> something else. Well, we're going to use that with your permission, general. We're going to take that laugh and have a picture of Barack Obama uh, heterosexual, and then your laugh underneath. Is that okay? Uh, go right to it. Go. 
Good. Uh, folks, thanks for being with us. We're going to have Dr. Alan Key shortly, so stay tuned. Good night, General. Good night. You have a computer if you're alive today, which means you have a hard drive, which means it's going to break down. Mosey, the backup people for thousands, for Stan, for thousands of people, for tens of thousands of people, is simply common sense. You go to cpnlive.com, click on the icon for Mosey, the backup people, and sign up. It's, it's just a few dollars a month. Let me tell you something. We had a break in. They stole our whole computer. You know what? When they take the computer, you can't recover anything, but we had Mosey. We had the backup. We were able to restore everything simply by buying another computer. CPNlive.com, click on the icon for Mosey the backup people and give yourself common sense, peace of mind, great value, the best thing you've ever done. Sooner or later, it's going to be Mosey the backup people. Hey, my name is Stan Solomon, and you know if I have something to say, I'll say it. And I'll only tell you the truth because I'm a Republican, not a Democrat. Democrats always lie. Republicans only lie half the time. I don't lie at all. This is the fuel mule. It's an extraordinary product that was developed by a friend of mine, an engineer, and it increases the fuel mileage on your vehicle. If you have a combustion engine, this will increase your mileage by 10 to 20 percent. It bolts around your fuel line. You can install it yourself or have your mechanic do it. It is an extraordinary item and it flat works. I've been using it for more than 10 years. It's increased my mileage on every vehicle I put it on. And by the way, it will last forever. You can get rid of your vehicle. Just take it off and put it on the next one. Go to cpnlive.com. You'll have more information there. You can order it right there. We absolutely guarantee you'll be satisfied. The Fuel Mule. It's a way to kick down your cost of fuel and kick up your mileage. Don't you love the name? I thought of it. The Fuel Mule. Let me ask you a question. Do you like being sick? I have in my hand an incredible product. It's called TR10 Super Colloidal Silver. TR10 stands for a trace to the negative 10th power. The particles in this silver product are six to eight angstroms, six to eight ten billionths of a meter. Now listen to me. Silver has been the magic bullet for all of human existence. The Egyptians used silver instruments. We use silverware. They put silver in your teeth because nothing can grow on silver. Silver will kill anything but liberalism. I'm working on that. This product, you go to cpnlive.com, buy one quarter of this product. It will last you for a very long time. Anytime you feel like you've been exposed to something bad, take some of this product, spray it in your mouth, or take a little bit and gargle it, swallow it, it will kill any pathogen. The average antibiotic kills 10 to 20 different pathogens. This product will kill 700 plus. Do yourself a favor, do your family a favor, do your doctor a favor, he's tired of seeing you. Get super colloidal silver, go to cpnlive.com, order the product, it's $29.95 plus shipping, I think it's $39.95 delivered any place in America, right to your door, it's worth 10 times that. Check it out. If you're not 100% happy, just return it and we'll give you your money back. I like to eat. Do you like to eat? We all do. And usually we run to the grocery store, we run to the convenience store, uh, or we have something in the fridge. But power's been out in parts of this country in the last few weeks. Uh, we don't know what's going to come down the pike economically. Smart people are putting in food. Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves is a line of foods that you can put away that will last for a very long time. You know, they say eat what you store and store what you eat. This is great tasting stuff, healthy for you, a full line. You go to our website, cpnlive.com, and click on the button for Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves and see all the different things we have. This is good tasting food, it's reasonably priced, it will last, and it's worth its weight in gold if a problem arises. I know you don't think there's gonna be anything that goes wrong, 
Actually, you do. This is smart. This is smart insurance. This is smart preparation. This is smart thinking. You have kids. You have a spouse. You have parents. You have dependents. Uh, you have an appetite. All those things can be addressed by a, a, a frugal but smart investment in Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves. Try them out. You will be tickled to death with the taste of them. You know what? In many cases, people start to eat this, and they think, heck, this tastes better and costs less than what you're going to the grocery store and buy. CPMLive.com. Check it out.